to What is Statistics, Part 2. All right, so last time we talked about Jesse Arnold's definition of statistics. And we said it was a process, decisions, and uncertainty are the three key ingredients. So statistics is the process of making decisions when confronted with uncertainty. So here we'll talk about the process. Uh, the most fla common flavor of the process is the scientific method, which will probably anger some people here in just a second because I've noticed that most people don't understand the scientific method. So I'm going to run through the scientific method that I like uh, as it f has far more steps than most people think about. So the first thing is a hypothesis. Okay, you probably learned that before. You need a hypothesis. And this is a testable question that can be answered. Okay, that's what we're going to make our decision about. Notice statistics has the word decision in it. Um, so a, hypo a testable question is what we're interested in, not something that's abstract that you can't test. We want to say this drug increases that quantity or this drug decreases this quantity. Uh, for example, more people with the vaccine uh, are less likely to obtain COVID-19 because that seems to be relevant right now. Significance level. How important is the question under consideration? Okay, and you might have heard of this as setting some sort of cutoff value like alpha equals 0 0.05. But really, when you choose that value, you're actually saying how important the question is. Um, how important is your question? You need to decide this because if it's a really important question, you're going to put lots of resources behind it. If it's not so important, you're not going to put a lot of resources behind it. And it, your whole experiment that follows is definitely going to depend on how important the question is. Then the next thing you're going to do is design the experiment. You're not going to collect data yet. You're going to make sure it reflects the hypothesis that you have and the significance level. Okay, And you're also going to put in there how you're going to analyze that data. It's not just going to be, oh, I'm going to uh, plant some seeds and see what happens. No, you're going to say exactly how much you're going to administer. And then once you collect the data, what you're going to do with that data. Okay, Then you're going to have a decision rule that follows it. Now, notice it, you're going to say, if I see this from the experiment, I will decide X. Otherwise, I will decide Y. So you're going to have two things that you're going to decide. Now, from this experiment, uh, you're going to see data or some sort of analysis, and that is what's going to guide how you decide X or Y is your conclusion. And this is all before you've ever seen any data. You need to put the decision rule before the data collection so that you can be unbiased and objective with your analysis. Then you're going to conduct the experiment exactly as you specified it. So many times I see people who will change the protocol midway through, and that destroys their experiment. Don't do that. Do it exactly as you specified and analyze the data as you specified. The next thing is, is apply the decision rules now that you have data, right? You made a decision rule. Now you have data. Apply that decision rule. Make a conclusion, X or Y. Then the next thing is write a conclusion, and that is to turn your decision into words. You're turning it, this what you've learned into something that someone else can use. And this is really important in science because a lot of people will go and say, oh, I rejected H0 because they're in a class. But who cares? Nobody cares. What they care about is what the conclusion is. Did it work? Did it not work? Does it help? Does it not help? Well, I mean, those are the questions that people want to have an answer to, and you write those in words. And then there's an eighth step, and most people forget this step. Now, notice I have a lot of extra steps in here from what most people learn is their uh, sort of scientific method. But there's another statement that comes at the end, after the conclusion. And it's go back to step one. And I personally believe all good research ends with a question, not an answer. You get an answer in step seven. And then they go, huh, I wonder what made that happen. I wonder if it were this. And you end up with a new question, so you go back to one. If you always end up with a conclusion and an ending, then it's probably not good science. All right, so we're back to what is statistics. We're here looking at the, the uh, process of decisions when confronted with uncertainty. We've covered what the process is. Next video, we're going to talk about what the decisions are. Or the, there's lots of decisions, but we'll focus on a few of them that are 
relevant to this course and kind of general enough that it cover probably about 90% of most people's decisions that they're going to make. So see you there.